I always thought it was funny how time is so intangible, yet you can hear it tick tock. And how after a while our whole entire lives sort of turn into a race to beat the hands on a clock. But I've come to realize we are relieved of this exhausting constant in our lives only every time we drift away after another strict and scheduled day as if our brains and time have made an immutable pact as if they've agreed we need a safe house where our reality can become overwhelmingly abstract. When I close my fatigued eyes, entering the alternate universe inside my skull, the TikTok starts to fade, depending on which door my brain knocks, and they start to sound like a bee buzzing, a dog barking, a waves crashing, a woman crying, a pen writing, or a voice coming from a foggy-faced person that I won't be able to remember once I wake up. We talk. For seconds or days, the length of time passing, I lack complete sense of no phone to eagerly glance at, and that's what makes this escape so delicate and so beautiful, it's complete freedom from the chains made of phrases like you're running out of time. But before I can say goodbye to my foggy-faced companion, my eyes open. And the TikTok continues as if it never stopped. It's 6 a.m., and as the light creeps through my window, I can't help but love the way the sun will always shine. But it's 6 a.m., and I can't help that I hate time. I hate it more than the way sad people look at me and lie, have the nerve to say I'm fine. I hate time because we're living by it and we're dying by it. I hate it for its inaccuracy in capturing the lengths of moments. One minute during math class in comparison to one minute holding someone you love and a heart aching goodbye doesn't seem equal to me in the slightest. No matter what mathematical formula I use, my brain can't seem to find a real solution. My brain can't seem to calculate how some minutes last, last lifetimes longer than others. But the same exact 60 seconds pass. Is there a missing variable or is it just an unproved law of the universe? Why? It's when I learn about the relativity of time in school. Instead of imaginary numbers that have imaginary explanations for how I will ever use this shit again in my life, my understanding for clocks is almost less than my understanding for what it means to be existent in the first place. And so I lay there, bundled in blankets. I picture a massive black hat, black top hat in the sky full of unborn timekeepers' names. I imagine when I got picked 16 years ago by the ultimate magician. Some people call him God. He takes out his magical map, closes his eyes, and lets his finger hover around the surface until it randomly lands on my family and my home. And so I lay there. I think about the less lucky names, who got placed in homes without beds, in countries without water, and I despise how comfortable I am, and I detest the icy glass of water on my nightstand, for its condensation is beginning to look more like perspiration dripping from the forehead of an eight-year-old boy in the Philippines who just wants to know where his family is, and if today he will find clean water, and I wonder if his day lasted longer than mine, I wonder if he dreamed for what felt like hours of an endless buffet and his mother's warm hands that he missed more than his only pair of shoes that had been washed away by the monstrous and hungry ocean that played puppet for a magician that placed him there in the first place. And I can't help but wonder, why not me? We may be far in distance now, but we once lay side by side in the bottom of a top hat bigger than our hearts, bigger than our dreams, bigger than the same exact sun we orbit around, marking each year of our lives, marking how we have 365 days less in our lifetime. And so I lay there, outstretched hands, wishing they could reach miles to repair the fake smiles that too many people wear more often than their favorite sweaters in December, wishing I could reach far enough to sweep the shattered glass from the floor of a dirty kitchen in a home where Papa doesn't know it, but his sadness takes the form of anger, and I wish my hands could reach all the boys and girls who spend their childhoods in hospitals, sick and swallowing pills that have names they can't pronounce, and I wish I could hold them and fill their IVs with my soul and cure them with kindness so their crooked tooth smiles can continue to beam so their innocent minds can continue to dream and so they can continue to live their lives by the ticking of a clock they haven't experienced so many beautiful things and it isn't time for the hands to stop not now and so i lay there it's 6 14 a.m and i hate time but i can't help but love the way the sun will always shine